just wanted to welcome you to the yoga mat. So you may or may not be able to see it, but my favorite yoga mat is right below me. And this is gonna be a new portion of my channel here, a painter's vlog that's called Welcome to the Mat. Topic that I really want to talk to you about because I'm not foreign to the topic I've experienced the topic and I'm sure if you can tell by the title of the video what we're gonna be talking about today it's the idea of being jealous so today we're gonna to be covering the idea of jealousy and how that can manifest in your body but more importantly five top tips according to me and my experience of how you can overcome and work through, identify this jealousy, move beyond and past it because actually this jealousy can really prohibit you from success and universal abundance and basically anything that you really want. But let's go ahead and dive right in. First we're going to be starting with a nice diaphragmatic breath and if you've never done diaphragmatic breathing you're going to be drawing the air in, deep inhale and as you draw in you're actually going to be pushing your stomach out because often we take shallow breaths from our chest which can actually be anxiety inducing. So let's go ahead and start with a nice deep diaphragmatic breath. Let's go ahead and inhale. And exhale. So I've been feeling very centered and grounded here in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and that's for another video. So we'll get into that at a later time. Um, and I'm going to be referencing some notes here. So just in case you see me looking down, it's because I really want this video to be comprehensive and cohesive and really, really kind of uh, just get to the point. But let's first talk about the actual definition of jealousy and what it means. I'm going to go ahead and pop it right up here. So just give that a read because there's no way I'm going to remember that. I know that there's a differentiation between jealousy and envy. But of course, we're gonna be focusing on jealousy today and specifically when you look at another artist's work and how that could potentially make you feel. So we are gonna be focusing primarily on the feelings of being jealous of someone else's work, but that could also translate to be, you know, someone else's job or someone else's life or family or body or like, basically jealousy is pretty universal and it can be translated to so many things so we're going to be focusing primarily on the jealousy of another artist's work because this is a painter's vlog i am an artist and i've experienced this so many times i come across as a very confident strong person but you know sometimes late at night when something ain't right no i'm just kidding um late at night i'll be scrolling through instagram and I think we've all been there where the longer you scroll, especially the more time you spend on Instagram, like for duration periods of time, you might find yourself kind of falling into this abyss or this hole and it may, maybe triggers some feelings that arise and come up within you. How can you really pinpoint, first of all, a jealous feeling? Like how can you differentiate that feeling of jealousy? It's kind of like a creeper, right? So it's kind of, you know, sometimes it'll just edge its way in and you might not really wholly be able to identify it. It might come across as like a feeling of sadness, a twinge of pain maybe a twinge of feeling hollow or a little bit empty or it might even come across as anger toward the other person or maybe feelings of inadequacy or feelings of just not feeling good enough which lord knows that's been an internal struggle for me a good portion of my lifetime and i'm still working through a lot of those feelings of not feeling good enough and i have my little sign here i should probably put this behind me there we go, isn't it just so cute? I got this at five and below. So um, how to obliterate jealousy. The first step is to identify the beast. So as soon as you're feeling those twinges come up and after you practice this, cause you might not be wholly aware that that's what it is at first, but you know, like say you're looking at another artist's work and maybe, maybe a thought pops in your head that you're like, I could never do that or 
holy shit, that are like, I'll never have enough money to do that. Or I'll never be able to hire an assistant or wow. Um, that's nepotism. Like who curated them and how many friends do they have in high places? You know, those are some of the more angry vibrations that might come in, but whatever that looks like in that moment of jealousy, um, just, learn to recognize that and, and usually like as i said it'll come up as a twinge in your body and then you can more quickly kind of work through that and obliterate it a lot of times these feelings might also be mixed with happiness because of course you want your friends to succeed right so i mean would you really be proud of yourself if all your friends just like didn't try or didn't put themselves out there or didn't succeed you know like how would that reflect on you would that make you feel better about your position? You know, so I think often considering the opposite um, is an interesting take. I think it's really important to literally, like in those moments when you identify the beast, to stop scrolling. So close your phone, close your applications, close TikTok, close Instagram, close Facebook, okay? Because a lot of times these are just not conducive for our mental health. We already know this. This is actually, probably, and I, I'm sure it has been researched scientifically time and time again, take a breather, take a moment and, you know, just give yourself that stillness, remove yourself from social media because often, you know, people are just portraying the best parts of themselves. As we know, no one's going to go on there and be like, Oh my God, I fucking got rejected for the third time from this art show or whatever. So, and just remember that a lot of times people are only posting their positive moments and their wins and their successes. We basically ultimately want to translate that feeling of powerlessness into a vibration of feeling powerful. But once you've actually identified all of the minute emotions coming up surrounding this trigger, um, the second part is you're going to want to dive straight into the heart of discomfort and actually befriend that. So you're going to want to think about the why and what this artist's success means to you specifically. This is gonna feel uncomfortable. One of my favorite Buddhist nuns, her name is Pima Chodron, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her, her name right. Hi, Trock, how are you? But her name is Pima Chodron, and she wrote a book, and I'll link it above, but it, it really, this book was actually revolutionary for me, really, really changed my way of thinking. In those times of darkness, and in those moments where you might be feeling a little weak, those are the moments the universe and nature is ultimately giving you to reflect on yourself and to really, really grow through that pain. And I know that it's painful and I know that it's so much easier just to keep scrolling and to numb yourself out or reach for a drink or smoke your pen or whatever you want to do to run away. But I encourage you just to like log out and sit there with yourself. Okay. So instead of finding the next best distracting thing, you know, um, so I've been reading Patanjali's The Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, and one of the pieces of advice he's talking about is not to really medicate with something further. Like, if you have pain or discomfort, not to just go to something else. It's kind of like, and this could be good because I know that in the Netherlands they medicate people with heroin addictions with methadone, right? But essentially, you're just going from one addiction to another. So it's not really remediating the problem it's not really taking care of that deep disquiet in your body so i think it's just really important to just get right in there and let's dig out the root you're just kind of thinking what this artist's success means to you and more often than not 100 times out of 100 at least 99 times out of 100 it's always about you and not about them and it's more often than not you know coming from this specific storyline that you've been carrying with you for a long time. So just kind of talking about my story a little bit, you know, when I was younger, I decided that for some reason or another, I wasn't good enough. And a lot of this stems from this moment I had in second grade. And I've told a few people about this story, but I don't know how this came about, but I had this teacher in second grade and there was this award that she was giving out and she asked the class, Hey class, who do you think deserves this Amber or Julia? And it was so weird that she decided to give the award based on the class's consensus, but that's what she did. And the class actually, the majority of them raised their hand and voted for Amber to receive this prize. 
it sounds like such a mundane, like boring, like, hey, just another day in the life at school. But what I walked away with from that very small experience, and there was, a, there was like dozens of others, okay, this is just one that I can remember, was that I wasn't good enough. And for some reason, someone else was better than me. And, you know, I still carry vestiges of this into my adulthood. And it's taken years and years of just reading through books, acquiring knowledge, meditating, really diving into the heart of my own pain and, you know, pulling out those roots one by one by one. And I know that some of those roots are still there, but thank God that they're coming out. So think about, you know, maybe a specific storyline that you have in your mind and your heart, something that you're carrying with you, you know, about yourself, because it's not about this other artist that, you know, has had a moment of success. It is healthy to honor feelings of discomfort and to switch the focus on what it is that you seek for yourself. So moving on to the third way to obliterate jealousy is to get hyper clear on what you want and what you deserve. So in order for the universe to respond to anything at all, whether it's that you want to make $10,000 this year or whether you want to get into spring break art fair or whether you want to sell a painting, the universe has to know what you want in order for it to respond and to give. There is immense power in the power of journaling and just really, really getting clear on what it is that you really want in this lifetime. It doesn't necessarily have to mean money it doesn't have to mean power it doesn't have to mean prestige it just has to be very personal because your journey is just as important as anyone else's and i think getting clear on what it is you want will allow the universe to respond to that a lot more quicker and if, if you're just kind of like if your thoughts are a jumble and your goals are a jumble then all of that's going to be translated throughout your life as a jumble and it's going to be frustrating because it's not going to feel linear it's not going to feel like there's an end goal it's going to feel more like you're kind of meandering and stumbling and so i know it can be hard at first to kind of really really tune in to what you want but again just as if you're you know tuning out social media just take a break take a few hours take a few days take a few months and really just get into tune, rest with yourself, meditate. And I also highly encourage, this is just kind of a side note, to set aside intoxicants. And um, for some of you that might be difficult, for me it's difficult, you know, but set aside the weed pens, set aside the mushrooms, set aside the drinking, and just really, you know, it's clear your vibration, you know what I mean? Clear the pathways and just really get in tune with what it is you want in this lifetime. And I also think a lot about reverse engineering or thinking about what would happen at the end of my life when I'm 96, 97. I do plan on living till at least 96, so that's cool. The thing I find fascinating about reverse engineering is if you know where you're going, you have a better chance of getting there. You know, if you've been following my stuff over the last three, four years, especially the last couple years, like I speak about reverse engineering all the time. It's just, it's how my brain works. And I truly believe it's how a lot of the people that win uh, do things. I do think it's massively important to know what you're trying to accomplish first, not waver from that, make that the North Star, cut out all the other bullshit, know it's black and white, forget the gray, forget the distractions, forget the what ifs, forget the subjectiveness, and address the finish line and then reverse engineer it. Like when you know what you want, you, when you know where you're going and you're not emotional about it and you don't care what other people think and you don't get distracted, you can get there if you focus on it 24-7, 365 forever. The problem for so many of you, the reason so few things are happening for a lot of people is they're confused. They don't know what they want. They want 8,000 things. They're just confused. Stop being confused. Figure out what you want, reverse engineer it and get it. But thinking about when you're 96, 97 years old and you're looking back at your life and what it is that you truly wanted. And I think a majority of, a majority of us could say that we never want to realize with horror that we let fear dictate our lives, right? 
So I think a lot of this discomfort arises from fear and that, that's often what jealousy is rooted in, is fear, inadequacy, and lack. And the fourth way of obliterating jealousy is to realize that you are your comrades. Now this is twofold. So the first being that there is a lot of truth in that the five people you surround yourself with are the five people whose attributes you kind of internalize and take on. These five people in your life become a reflection of you, you become a reflection of them, and vice versa. This is not to say that you completely have to cut out people from your life who don't feel like the best influence, who might be skeptical, or who might be living in a sense of lack, but I would highly encourage you to kind of diminish the amount of time that you spend with that person because those vibrational frequencies will really tend to start taking away. Like say for instance, someone is just always keen on gossiping all the time. Now, don't get me wrong, I love a good gossip session too. But if that's all your friendship revolves around, that tends to translate into a really low vibration. And you know, the, the types of friendships that I have often, you know, are ones that we can we can shoot the shit and we can have those fun conversations but we can also shift gears into a more like kind of spiritual and mystical mindset like these conversations that really feel fulfilling and exciting and leave you walking away from a conversation feeling like wow, I just really deep into that friendship. Those are the kinds of people that you wanna surround yourself with. People that are really going out there and doing things, people that are manifesting. And this doesn't necessarily mean people that are like uber wealthy because there's plenty of wealthy people who are living in lack and they're not happy, you know? So it's really important to find those people in your life that are supportive, who will uplift you, who really, really celebrate your wins and have full faith in your capacities. Because if you're hanging around with someone who, you know, is living in a scarcity mindset, then, you know, you're going to feel a little more skeptical yourself over time, I think. And I, and I really, really found that. And also the other half of that is when your friends are winning, you're winning too. Always remember that when your friends are showing in highfalutin galleries, like say your friend just got picked up by Pace, okay? That's amazing. I know that you might immediately have the sense, well, what the hell, why not me? Like, damn, when's my turn? When's gonna be my moment to shine? You know, okay, fine. But you don't have to, you don't have to say that. You can acknowledge that feeling and then go through these steps and just immediately, don't let that vibration get low. Raise that vibration. Reach out to them immediately or five minutes later, whatever. But reach out and just thank them. You'll, you'll be surprised how good that feels. So rather than just to scroll past, you know, like even if you're feeling a sense of jealousy or something and then just being, well, okay, whatever, like scrolling past, even if it's just an acquaintance or something like that, just congratulate them. Ultimately, you, you know, you never know in the future when that person's going to remember that or like just kind of like think about you as an amazing artist and be like, you know, maybe they have an opportunity to curate a show in the future and they they re they remember your kindness, they remember your generosity. I think I think above all in any industry, any job, any profession, kindness fucking wins. Kindness wins. Generosity wins, giving wins. I love when my friends win because that means I'm winning too. That means that I'm surrounding myself with the right people, high vibration energies, and I know that I'm gonna be lifted right there with them so long as, it's not just from the energies, but so long as I am consistently working on my own craft, my own vision, my own paintings, my own multimedia work, Whatever, whatever that looks like for you, whether that's your YouTube channel, your paintings, your carpets. I'm doing a punch hole rug right now. So whatever that looks like for you, you know, whether you're a writer or whatever. So whatever creative medium you have, you know, as long as you're honoring that, you know, the universe is really, really, really going to hear you and respect you and honor you right back. So... Remember in those moments of feeling lack um, to really, really switch that mindset. And I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy just to be like, oh, I live in abundance. But that brings me to my last point. The final and fifth way to obliterate any sense or feeling of jealousy 
is, and I'm going to say a quotation by Jodis, Dr. Jodis Benza, who I am a huge fan of. Your body doesn't know the difference between an experience and a thought. And this is really, really important because this is, you know, considering your overall mindset and really what frequency you're resting at. So what's really interesting is it's it's actually being and it has on some levels been scientifically proven. Your body doesn't know the difference between an experience and a, and a thought. Okay, for example, um, I don't know what study this is and you can look it up on your own, but a lot of Olympic athletes actually visualize winning the race and they'll, they'll go through the entire race, whatever they're doing, whether it's luge or running or whatever. They'll go through their race or their, you know, sport and they'll visualize step by step by step going through the race, starting, you know, listening to the gun, going the middle of the race, the end of the race, winning the race is a huge part of it, obviously, winning that gold medal, winning that silver medal, you know, placing. Scientifically, it's been proven that their muscles actually increase. Now, it's a very nominal amount, but I find this absolutely fascinating because the body, when, when you feel something, your body doesn't know the difference. What this means is before you're ever experiencing any amount of abundance to really, really feel it. This is going to take time. This is a practice that takes a lot of dedication, perseverance, and devotion. And this is bite size over time, right? So if you're starting a meditation practice, which I highly encourage for anyone out there, um, what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit there on your mat in the morning, clearing your mind, but then what I do, what I dedicate nearly every day in my meditative process is a time to manifest abundance and to really, really feel that in my body. And like I said, this will take practice because at first you're gonna be like, this is silly, I'm broke as shit, right? I just looked at my bank account, I've got $500 in there. That's ruining the path, that's ruining the progress right? So we, we want to, we want to trick, we want to trick our body. And so we're, we're going to feel this in our body that we are wildly abundant. And so I find a really, really great trick is to talk in the present sense. For instance, I'm a multimillionaire and I am so beyond thrilled to have millions of dollars because I never thought that this was possible for myself. And I actually set up a school in Cambodia for the children for Colors of Cambodia and now they don't even have to worry about rent anymore. You get the idea. So really, really kind of switching your language surrounding what you really want in life. Just as a recap, here we have um, how to obliterate jealousy. The first step, identifying the beast. Diving straight into the heart of discomfort. Don't be afraid. Befriend it and in your greatest enemies, you will find your greatest strengths. Get hyper clear on what you want. Be sure to journal. Number four, you are your comrades. So remember, if your friends are succeeding, so are you. And the fifth one is your body doesn't know the difference between experience and thought. So really begin to feel how that would feel. I really, really hope that this video could be of service and that it could just at least maybe help you with one of these steps moving through and past your own pain and stories surrounding those feelings of jealousy because we're all human and we all experience those moments. I, I think it's absolutely crucial for you to set down the social media and just begin the practice of stopping to compare yourself to other people and really just begin to manifest for yourself and what you want from your life and also to just forget everything and honor the miracle that is you the fact that there is no one on this earth like you and the fact that you have something nobody else does and that is your unique vision your own set of ideals and experiences. I think it's really important just to honor, you know, the child within you and kind of look back at yourself when you were five years old and consider what you would, would tell yourself. And I think uh, most of us would be very kind. So through this process, you know, just realize that you're human, give yourself a big old hug, be kind. Don't forget the diaphragmatic breaths 
And if you found any value in this video, please like or consider subscribing. It really, really helps with the algorithm. And if you have any further advice, I would love to hear your advice. I do read every single comment and I look forward to hearing what you think. So have a beautiful and blessed day and I'll see you on the mat next time.